A drive through the Concord Covered Bridge is an experience like no other. The sound of the creek babbling below and the scenery around it create a feeling of appreciation for the founders of the area. Let us take you on a journey through time, exploring the history of the Concord Covered Bridge. The bridge was built in 1872 by Robert Daniel and Martin Ruff. They owned the nearby mills and needed to take their goods across the creek. The grist mill near the base of the creek and the woolen mill a little farther back in the woods were both very important to the beginnings of the city of Smyrna. The woolen mills produced clothing for Confederate soldiers. The original mill was burnt down but had been rebuilt to continue operation. The grist mill produced feed and other various sweets for use on farms and for cooking. The bridge was built because of the development of the village called Mill Grove around the mills. People needed to get over the creek and the bridge was the way to do it. It is known that before the covered bridge was built, there was a one-lane bridge there that was burnt down in the July 4, 1864 Civil War Battle of Ruff's Mill. The Concord Bridge was built to replace this bridge. In the early 1900s, a legend surrounding the bridge came about. This legend states there are waterhead babies who lived in Mill Grove who drowned in the Nick Jack Creek. The legend states that they lived near the bridge. It is said if you place a Snickers or Butterfinger in the bridge or on top of your car, it will disappear and be eaten by the waterheads of the Concord Covered Bridge. Here is an interview with former resident of the Smyrna area, Rex Q. Could you please describe the legend of the Concord Covered Bridge? Yes, I can describe the legend of the Concord Cover Bridge, at least as I know it from my youth. Um, I graduated from Osborne High School in 1982, and as I was growing up, um, particularly in my high school years, uh, sometimes you would go on a date to go out. You would take your dates because you'd want to get them scared, and you'd give them the whole legend. And what you'd do is you'd go down to the Cover Bridge area, which is very wooded, and you would ride around and you would yell out, um, Waterheads! Waterheads! We're here! Um, and you know you'd say we got candy bars you know we got a butterfinger and so you would roll down the windows you kind of yell that out and ride some of those little back roads back in there uh you know i guess a waterhead which seems kind of ridiculous now that i'm an adult but at the time uh, you know was someone born with water on the brain and we believed that there was a whole colony of waterheads that lived back in the woods and that they were watching you as you were riding around so uh did. I know that some of the kids talk now about stopping on the bridge, cutting off their lights, um, which could be very dangerous because it's a one-lane bridge. We would just send one person, so only one person would get gotten, right? As opposed to the whole car load of people. Uh, so you'd send one person over to the bridge, you'd take a candy bar, they would go set it on the bridge, and they'd come right, you know, run back out. We'd get them in the car, and we'd ride around some more yelling, and then when you come back and you would go check the bridge, the uh, Butterfinger or whatever you had left is gone. In recent years, development in the Concord area has escalated. The east-west connector was originally proposed to intersect directly in the historic district. Initially, the, the plan was to put the east-west connector right along Concord Road, which would take out the bridge totally. Not only would this have increased traffic on Concord Road, it would have jeopardized the historic district, one of the first in the nation. But the community worked incredibly hard in, in getting that arrangement. Subdivisions in the area have been rapidly developing as well. These subdivisions and developments have increased the traffic count on the bridge, which has played a part in the deterioration. The latest major problem that the historic district faces is the proposed building of a cell tower in the parking lot of the Silver Comet Trail. This parking lot is right up the road from the covered bridge. We don't think it's a good welcome sign to the gateway into the historic district. But it's county owned property and the county wants the revenue. I think visually it would be an intrusion that um, if you're coming from Smyrna side, especially towards the historic district, the first thing you see would be a cell tower. Although the bridge is endangered, there are groups out there to protect it. The bridge is listed on the Cobb County, the State of Georgia, and the National Register of Historic Places. There are also groups who are dedicated to the history and preservation of the area. The Concord Covered Bridge is more than a pretty picture or a scenic drive. It is a landmark, representing the history and hard work of the founders of the Concord Covered Bridge community.